morning to you. It is Monday, November the 1st, and we are rapidly coming to a close of 2021. Uh, for some, that's uh, oh my. For others, it's uh, praise the Lord that 2021 is coming to a close. But I'm reminded that every day is ordained by God, and He is still in control of every day. It's good to be back on this week. I'm not sure if I had announced last week or the week before that I would not be on Facebook Live last week, although my intentions were to be on on Thursday, but I took a short trip down to Miami to celebrate my birthday with two close friends and turned 60. And while I was there, I lost my phone. I left it in the Uber car. And so if you tried to text me or call me last week, that's probably why I didn't have a phone until... Friday. So uh, my apologies to you in that, but it was actually kind of nice not to have a phone for a few days. And so I could not do Facebook Live last Thursday morning. So we're back on track now, November the 1st. And I got to say, I really missed connecting with everybody during the week. I don't know if you ever have times like this when you're, when you're away. Uh, for me, I just seem to get really disconnected from folks and it's hard to catch up again. And, uh, with that, there's so many different prayer requests, and I may I may miss one or two, but just share with you the uh, to continue to pray for Vanessa as she's in uh, her treatment for breast cancer. Pray for Constantine and Leah as he is still gaining strength, and and uh, we're believing the Lord's healing him of his cancer. Uh, also, I want to ask you to pray for Ronnie Sorrow. His dad's funeral was yesterday. His dad passed away. And Jimmy Casillo is caring for his dad now at home with hospice care. So be praying for Jimmy and his dad. Uh, there are a number of different surgeries coming up that people are facing. I know Glenda Smith is having neck surgery. I think November the 10th, Barbara, you just text me and let me know that. And so, so many needs in the body. I encourage you to stay connected with everybody in your small group and in the church body. Um, it's easy to get separated and to get disconnected, as we're all aware, but we so need the body. Uh, Lynn, I'm looking forward to hearing from you how the women's prayer retreat was this past weekend. This morning, as I was reading through the rest of chapter 10 in John, this old hymn came to my mind, and uh, you'll see why in a little bit when we get into passage. To go up thy cross and follow me I heard my master say I gave my life to ransom thee surrender The 
shadow or o'er the stormy sea. I take my cross and follow him wherever he leads me go. My heart, my life, my all I bring to Christ who loves me. song brings back a lot of memories. Um, it seemed to be one that was played every year in the little church I grew up during Revival Week. Remember, we used to have those Revival Weeks, and uh, every service would usually start with the song Revive Us Again, and would close with, with that song. So, uh, brings back a lot of memories. We're in chapter 10. We're closing out chapter 10 now of the book of John and picking up in verse 22. It says it was at the, it was the time of the Feast of Dedication, which on the calendar would have been Hanukkah that we'll be celebrating soon, the Jewish tradition of Hanukkah. Uh, and uh, Jesus took a place at Jerusalem. In, it was in the winter, verse 23. And Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon, so the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Um, they were wanting to know, they were wanting to hear Jesus emphatically say that he was the Messiah, that he was the Christ. Uh, he had not directly said that, although um, there were many times where he, he made that claim, uh, but didn't outright make the claim. Uh, and Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe me because you are not among my sheep. And so here Jesus said, look, the works that I'm doing, uh, they bear witness about me. They bear witness that the Father has sent me, not only the works that he would have performed, but we had already seen that there were many that marveled at his teaching. Uh, they had never heard a rabbi, teacher, teach the way that he had taught and especially without formal training as a rabbi. And so the works and the words of Jesus were pretty evident. Um, and I, I'm reminded that there are so many that, uh, that, that God is so evident, makes himself so plain. Just in creation, as Paul says in Romans, that God has revealed himself uh, through all of creation. And there were many in Jesus' days that saw his miracles, that saw the things that he performed, and they followed after him for a little while. But when his sayings got hard, they departed from him. 
when it's things got hard, such as um, you, you must eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, meaning that I, I've got to be your everything and you've got to turn, you've got to repent. Uh, the sayings got hard and they turned away from him. And just as it was in that day, it's so it is today that there are many that, that are maybe attracted to the things of God, maybe attracted to church activities, uh, maybe are excited for a little while. Uh, but when the, when the sayings get hard, they turn away. In other words, when God calls us and he uh, makes it evident to us that he has got to be Lord. He's got to be master of our lives. Uh, there are many that turn away. There's some that start out on the journey, but they, they turn away. And just as it was then, so it is today. Now, Jesus makes a claim uh, that they, they, they don't understand, they don't believe because they are not among my sheep. Now, this probably got the air of those Pharisees for Jesus to make the claim that, that they were not of the fold of God. And he goes on to say that my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. That's why I the song, Wherever He Leads I Go, came to mind. And as I was thinking about that verse this morning, just meditating on it and chewing on it, I was first grateful that, um, that I am one of his sheep you can be grateful this morning that you are one of his sheep. If you've trusted Christ, you've been born again, you're a part of the fold. And he says very clear that my sheep hear my voice. It's a gift that God has given to us that once we're born again, we're able to hear God. Paul says in, in Corinthians that the natural man, the one who's not born again, does not understand the things of God, doesn't understand the words of God, because they are spiritually discerned. It's not until we're born again and our old man is crucified with Christ and we're giving a new nature and the Spirit of God comes to reside in us that all of a sudden we begin to understand and see spiritual things. I think I said it a couple of weeks ago that I can remember when I was born again, it was, it was an instantaneous transformation that I had an insatiable desire for the word of God. I'm reminded of a, of a guy that's in my in, in a discipleship group with me that we meet on Friday mornings, Matt Meyer. Um, boy, such an evident change in his life. Once he came to know Christ, he had such an insatiable desire for the word of God, and he still does today now, about three years after he's been saved. And that's one of the marks and evidence of somebody who has been saved. They have a longing for the word of God. And, um, we never want to give that up. But he says in this verse, my sheep know me, they hear my voice, and they follow me. James says in his letter that we're not to be just hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word. My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. And if you're like me, occasionally uh, I reluctantly follow his voice. Uh, sometimes it takes a little longer to follow his voice. Sometimes he has to speak a little louder. Sometimes God has to introduce circumstances in my life that cause me to follow him. But we still battle against that flesh and the flesh that we are strapped with until the day Jesus returns or we go to meet him is always going to be tugging at the spirit. It's always going to be in conflict with the spirit. And it shouldn't surprise us that we have that. The Apostle Paul even explained that he had that battle with him in Romans chapter 6 and chapter 7. He goes into great length of this war, if you will, that, that happens within himself. He, he says that the things I, I know that I ought to do, in other words, following God, I find myself not doing those things. The things I, I know that I ought not do, those things I find myself doing. And so... Um, if you think that you're going to gain perfection on this side, uh, I hate to bust your bubble, you're not. Uh, but that doesn't mean we give into the flesh. We still are empowered by the Spirit, and it is going to be that way until we go to meet Jesus. Thank God there is a process of sanctification. We don't struggle with some things like we did uh, previously, but we all struggle with sin every day. There's that battle between the flesh and the Spirit and God, by His Holy Spirit, has given us power to not give in to the battle of the flesh. In verse 28, He says, I give them, those that is my sheep, I give them eternal life, 
and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Now here's a great promise to hold on to. He gives us eternal life and, and we'll never perish. We'll, we'll have eternity. Though on this side, we're going to die. This physical body's going to die. We have that assurance that we will never perish spiritually, that, that we are saved unto the very end. And th there is assurance here that once we have been saved, once a person has trusted Christ, we are saved for eternity. And Jesus clearly says, no one, nothing can ever snatch us out of the Father's hand. You see, there are those that, that believe and teach that a person can lose their salvation. Well, that's just not biblical. That's not the teaching of Scripture. That once we are saved, there is the perseverance of the saints, that we are saved for all of eternity. Paul explains in Romans chapter 8 that there is nothing that can ever separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So rest assured today that you are saved for all of eternity. Verse 31, back to verse 30. He makes the claim again explicitly, I and the Father are one. Here Jesus is making the claim, not only is he the Son of God, but he's making the claim that he is God, very God. Verse 31, the Jews at that saying, when he made the statement that he and the Father are one, they pick up stones again to stone him. And they're stoning him, they're wanting to stone him because of blasphemy. He made himself out to be God. And Jesus answered them, I have sworn, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you going to stone me? In other words, I've shown you many, I've done many miracles, many good works. Which one are you going to stone me for? The Jews answered him, it is not for a good work that we're going to stone you, but for blasphemy. Because you, being a man, make yourself God. So there it's very clear again. Jesus is God. The cults teach that Jesus was not God. Among them are the Jehovah Witnesses, the Mormons, and others. They deny the deity of Christ. But Jesus makes it very clear, as recorded by the Apostle John, that he is God. And so um, there are many that are caught up in these cults, but they've not trusted the true gospel, which makes the declaration that Jesus is God. Um, then he goes on in verse 34. Jesus says, is it not written in your law? I said, you are God's. Now here Jesus is quoting Psalm 82, 1. And it was customary in, in the Far East, the Near East, where one who might be a ruler or a judge who's been appointed by God to, to be in, in that place of judgment or to rule over, they were often elevated with the title of God's, small g's. And uh, so here he's quoting from Psalm 82, verse 1, from the Word of God. He says, again, uh, is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If he called them gods, that is, those who would rule and judge, to whom the Word of God came, the Scriptures cannot be broken. Do you say of him whom the Father consecrated and sit into the world, you are blaspheming because I said, I am the Son of God? If I am not doing the works of my Father, then, do, then you do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. In other words, listen, if your own law, if the, if the Word of God gives those titles, uh, the title of God, small g, uh, to those who were appointed by him to be rulers and execute justice, how much more, how much greater is it then that the one that the Father has sent um, would, would make the claim that he is God? And so here we see a couple of applications in this this morning as we close. Number one is God's sheep hear his voice and we follow him. Open your heart, open your mind, open your eyes to the scriptures today and hear his voice. He speaks to us through his word and he speaks to us by the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Thank God that he is a good shepherd that speaks to us and he leads us and he calls us to follow him 
for righteousness sake and for our own benefit in this life so that we're not led away by our flesh or led away by some other person that, that may lead us astray but we're secure in him. We hear his voice and we follow after his voice. Whatever it is he's speaking to you today, be obedient and follow that. Be quick to obey. And then secondly, praise God that there is absolutely nothing that can snatch you out of the Father's hands. If you've been born again, there's neither height nor depth. There's no sin. There's no principality. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Well, I pray the Lord blesses you today. Ask God for an opportunity to, to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart. If we recognize that a seed has been planted, that God would give us the wisdom and discernment to know how to cultivate that seed and pray that God would use you and use me today by his grace, by his mercies to watch him save somebody today and we can be a part of leading them to come to know Christ. I love you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Have a great day.